Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another weekly educational lesson. This week's topic, guys, is something I've been getting a lot of emails about recently. Uh, a lot of folks email me every week saying, hey, can you do this, can you do that, et cetera, and so forth. And this is one that's been going on for a long time and I finally decided to talk about it and it is, what are some of my turning points? What are some revelations that I've come up with through the years of trading? You know, a lot of you guys out there are plateauing in your trading where you think you're just so close to making it um, and you just need that one more little thing. What was it for me that got me over the top, that got me over that plateau? Um, so there are kind of three things that I talk about in this video, guys. Um, so I think it's a, it's a good one. We talk a little bit about psychology here. We talk charts in here, what's really important on a chart chart. Um, so it's kind of a, a good 50-50 mix uh, of charts uh, as well as some psychology and tech slide charts because I know you guys don't like the tech slide charts. I get all that, but that's where the really good stuff is. So again, it's kind of trading revelations, things that have helped me through the years, things that helped me get over the plateau um, because I think as traders, guys, we all go through a very similar process to success. Okay, I know everybody thinks they're different or they're special. You're not special and you're not different. We all typically have the same mental game or the same mental emotions that afflict us uh, in trading. Most people come in undercapitalized, overhyped, um, and they have expectations that grossly exceed their experience. I'm gonna talk about that probably next week uh, in specifics. Um, but all these things make it very challenging to become a really good trader. So uh, the three things that I talk about today I think will help you guys get over some of your demons uh, and some of the things that might be afflicting you as a trader as well. Also guys, we have an open house, a chat room, free, free, free open house coming up here soon. I will put the sign up link in the description. Okay, I'll put the sign up link in the description. It's free, I know you guys love free. Um, so open house in the chat room coming up here very soon. You don't wanna miss that. Otherwise guys, it's about a 45 minute lecture. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get to it. So today's topic, today's lecture is trading revelations and turning points, what it takes to succeed. So I've been getting some emails recently um, from folks, I get emails all the time, but emails about, hey Jared, what was it? What was the one thing or two things or three things that, that um, helped you plateau or, or overcome the plateau and, and, and succeed? Because I think we all get to a point in trading, I think many of you guys um, can appreciate this, where you you think you're so close like you're like I'm just right there I'm just right there but I um I'm not quite getting it well what gets you over that point so we're going to talk about some of those things today and don't worry there's plenty of charts involved guys <laughs> all right um so we're going to talk about that but I have three kind of quote trading revelations or turning points that I think in my opinion uh in one way or another relate to all traders out there okay I'd be surprised if every trader didn't go through some of these things at some point if not all of these things okay so let's talk about it okay in in brief all right, revelation one, experts are made, they are not born, okay? We're not talking about being a seven foot tall basketball center here. That's just genetics and you're born that way. I'm not saying that everybody is born with 160 IQ. This is not what I'm suggesting. However, what I am saying is almost everything you do in life is a learned trait from somewhere you learned it from, okay? So experts are made and not born. Harvard did a study on this. I want to say it was like 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and I think it's called the making of an expert. I think that's what it's called, the making of an expert. Um, so they go over the 10,000 hour theory and all those other things. And they realize that whether it's professional athletes, whether it's business people, they're made. Okay, you're not just born a CEO. You're not just born a professional tennis player. All right, you're made into one of those things. Well, you're not born to be a trader, so to speak. That's a good thing. Think about it in a positive light. That means most of you, not all, I'm not gonna blanket everyone, most of you have a realistic chance of doing well at this business because traders aren't born. It's a very counterintuitive business. So uh, most of the time our emotions are really um, challenged in this business. So this is a good thing. Why? Because it means you can overcome these things, all right? Next, 
it's all about management. It's all about management. I am so sick and tired of talking about money management, but we're gonna talk about different things, whether it's money management, whether it's time management, whether it's trade management, whether it's behavioral or personality management, we're gonna talk about management as well. And then we're gonna talk about the need for objectivity and self-responsibility. You could also change self-responsibility and replace it with accountability. So you have to be objective and you have to be responsible and accountable. Now, why is that important? It's important because this is likely the only business you've ever done where nobody's gonna hold you accountable. You don't have a boss to hold you accountable. You don't have society to hold you accountable. You don't have a police officer to hold you accountable. It's just you. Maybe your spouse holds you accountable, I don't know, but otherwise it's just you. So if you lack the objectivity, mindfulness, self-responsibility or accountability, it will be a challenging endeavor. So these are the things for me that really kind of pushed me over the top. So let's kind of dig in. Like I said, I'm we're talking about these uh, these characteristics in here, but I'm going to use charts to explain most of them. All right. So first things first, guys. Experts are made, not born. Successful trading is not luck. I, I mean, many of you probably don't think it is luck, but sometimes people in the general public think it's luck. Okay. It is not. There's a reason that the same traders do well all the time and the same traders do poorly all the time, right? So it's a product of purposeful training, not talent or giftedness, period. Now, where am I getting this from? It's from the making of an expert, okay? So I'll skip one here, but if we analyze the development of superb performers, we see that in almost every single case, the success of their entire career was dependent on the quality of their practicing, which was the product of supervision by their teacher. Now, that in lies the problem, all right? This isn't a plug for education, it's not at all. I am telling you, who is your teacher? Who is that person to hold you accountable? There isn't one in trading. Sure, you can come into a chat room. Sure, you can get an educational course. Sure, you can do all those things, but after you take it, there's nobody tapping you on the shoulder saying, don't do that, Johnny. Don't do that, Susie, right? You have to be the one. And this is where a lot of traders go wrong because, well, they don't have a trading buddy. They don't have somebody to come into their trading office and help keep them accountable. Otherwise, what are you doing, right? Everything in life is pointless if there's nobody there to hold you accountable. We, despite what you think of them, and I think they're wonderful, but we need police officers. Otherwise, society would run amok. Well, Basically, you guys are traders without consequence. You're traders without police supervision, all right? So you have to keep that in mind, okay? Most experts practice only two hours a day, but it's an intense two hours with clear purpose and direction, okay? How many of you are just fluffing around at this, hacking around it? Be honest. How many of you just, and again, this is rhetorical. You don't have to answer the question. How many of you just, kind of thought you saw an article online and you're like, wow, that seems appealing. You know what? I want to be a trader. And you go down, you open up a trading account uh, and may maybe you buy a cheap hundred dollar course and maybe you join a chat and you're like, I'm going to be a trader. And that's it. That's all the thought you've really put into it. You've literally thought about it. You know, wow, I'd like to trade in my pajamas. Oh, I'd like to walk 10 feet to my office and, and not, you know, not do the rush hour traffic thing and not wear a suit and not have a, how many of you have done that? And you said, I'm going to be a trader. Most, a lot of people. Okay, but that doesn't make you a trader. Just because you pass a McDonald's and, want to, and go, wow, I'd like to open a McDonald's. You think you just magically snap your fingers three times and then you open a McDonald's? No, you go through what? An application process, a screening process, a financial what? Financial viability process, okay? And then you go to Hamburger University. So McDonald's has a routine, why? because McDonald's is in the business of success. They're not in the business of failure. How many McDonald's that you see around close down? Seriously, how many? I don't know that many. I see the same damn McDonald's for the last 20 years everywhere I go around town because they're successful, okay? So when you think about this, are you treating this like a business? No, you're probably not because most of you, are, let's be honest, you're just hackers. Oh, that sounds cool. I'd like to not have a boss. I'd like to not have rush hour traffic. I'd like to make 500 and turn it into a million dollars in 47 days. BS, it's all garbage. But that's what you're buying into, if it sounds too good, right? And then Sam Sneed said it well at the bottom. It's only human nature to want to practice what you can already do well. 
since it's a heck of a lot less work and a heck of a lot more fun, right? It's, you know, what he's probably referring here is when people go to a driving range and they pull out their driver and they just keep smacking their driver. Instead of chipping and putting and practicing their sand game or their short game, they just go do that. What do you guys do in trading? You probably practice things you're already good at. You're not working on your mental game. You're just scanning charts all day, which scanning charts is a good thing, but you're not working on what the real problem is. And the real problem is between your ears. That's the problem. Okay, so I'm going to repeat it one more time. If we analyze the development of superb performers, we see that in almost every case, the success of their entire career was dependent on the quality of their practicing, which was the product of supervision by their teacher. Wow. Okay. Truly, truly wow. All right. Now, let's take a look at this. We take a look at this chart. We're going to stop the gaps up, rips higher, pulls back, bottoming tail, narrow body doji bar, right at the moving average, right at minor price support. Even you get a small, tiny little mini breakout here. You get in this thing right around 49.50, maybe a little bit under. Your stop loss is like 49.20, rip. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And you could even add right here on the breakout. So buy set up here, add here. Well, guys, I don't know about you, and everybody's at a different stage in their trading, but this is immediately jumps off the page at me. Wow. So yes, I quickly recognize and like this pattern. If you can literally look at this and in two or three seconds go, wow, what a nice pattern, you've probably mastered that pattern. What does that mean? This means stop hitting your driver at the driving range. You got that. You got the big dog down. Maybe go practice some sand shots. Maybe practice some putting. It means you have this pattern down. Don't focus your two or three hours of study time on this pattern. You already know it, okay? your time is probably spent in other areas you're less familiar with, okay? If you don't get this pattern immediately, okay, then you need what? Practice, practice, practice. You need to add this to your practice routine and make sure you have someone that keeps you accountable for it, okay? All right. On to Revelation 2. This one's a little bit longer. We'll spend a little bit more time on this. It's all about management okay this entire business is about management there is no holy grail it just doesn't exist i know everybody's selling the holy grail but it doesn't exist okay when i say management i'm talking about not just money management which you guys are very well aware of i'm also talking about trade management i'm talking about time management i'm talking about personality and behavioral management how well do you really manage your personality and behavior every day how well do you really manage it? Probably not that well, okay? How well do you truly manage your time? Now, I understand, guys, I get it. We all have an ego, and I understand that you feel like you should have gotten that promotion at work, but you got passed over, and I get it. There's a reason you got passed over. You just don't believe it. You just can't be objective enough to see it because everybody thinks they're great at everything. Where am I going with this? Are you really spending your time in a productive fashion. See, there's a difference. Everybody has a different opinion of what productive is. Some people truly believe that 40 hours a week is hard work. It's not, it's garbage, okay? That's what people making 50 grand a year do. They work 40 hours a week. Name me somebody that makes half a million dollars, a million dollars a year that works 40 hours a week. Sure, there's some out there. Of course, there's an exception to every rule. It ain't the norm. It is not the norm, okay? So when you think you're working hard because you're putting in 42 hours a week, you're not working hard, okay? That's the appeal to trading, isn't it? Oh, I can work 12 hours a week. I can put in two hours a day, three hours a day for five days. Sure, maybe 10 years from now, five years from now when you really get it down. So your time management probably isn't as good as you think it is, okay? Personality-wise, not understanding your personality, not understanding what makes you click, what makes you tick. Okay, this is a serious problem for people. Because this problem here, not knowing your personality, not understanding your behavior, what you do every day, affects the rest of these three things. It affects your time management, it affects your trade management, and it darn sure affects your money management. So until you can fully appreciate, respect, and understand your behaviors, your personality, 
you're not going anywhere in this business, nowhere. So guys, there's a lot more than one way to successfully manage a trade. I was taught, for example, that pivots are the, not the only way, but the best way to make good money. I was also taught that small targets are for novices. These were two things that were drilled into my head. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because this relates to personality and behavior. I was not, and I'm still not, 15 years later, I am still not the big target person. I get this question all the time. We had somebody in the chat room the other day when I got out of FIVE for 2R ask, well, why are you getting out of here? It's going higher because I always get out of 2R. That's why, because that suits my personality. I understand my personality well enough to know that I'm not getting four or five R out of it. I found my sweet spot. Might not be your sweet spot, but it's my sweet spot. So when I started, I immensely struggled. Why? Because I was taught that pivots are the best way to make money. Well, they are a great way to make money. I am not denying this. They just weren't a great way for me to make money. So what makes you tick? Okay, so the next line is know thyself. Focus on what works for you. Don't let others push you into a singular mold. Be flexible and think outside the box. Guys, know thyself, okay? You have to understand who is really trading. Not the person you think you put on paper in your plan, but the actual person. You only know this from what? Your actions. Tracking your actions. Recording yourself when you trade. It's the only way you're going to know these things. Okay, so understand your expectation before you decide on a specific style or trade. And as always, guys, gosh darn it, keep it simple. We're going to look at this in just a second. Keep it simple, okay? So it's all about pivots. It's all about pivots, right? This is what I was taught. It's all about pivots. So right here, what do we have? I mean, it's a pretty damn nice chart. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Bottoming tail, doji bar at support, at the rising moving average. So I take the top of the pivot, the bottom of the pivot is right around 50%. My goodness, I am just checking the boxes on this thing, right? What a great pattern. What a great potential trade. I agree with all of that. What another decent breakout. A little bit of a hiccup up there, but look at that breakout. Oh my gosh, look at this buy setup. So it's all about pivots, isn't it? We buy right here, right there, right? We're going to get in right here. We're gonna put our stop loss down here and our first target's gonna be somewhere up in this range. So what do we do? Stop rips. We don't touch our stop loss, we're just leaving it. Gets all, oh, there's the wide range bar, but before it gets there, after the wide range bar, maybe I dump a, a quarter, maybe I dump a third, I raise my stop. I raise my stop. Moves higher, I pull back, moves higher, I raise my stop. Pulls back, or rips, pulls back, goes high, I raise my stop. In theory, this is tremendous, guys. It's absolutely incredible. If you can do it, I'm gone. So you're getting into this trade somewhere under 54. Like Let's call it 53.80. And your stop loss is like 53.40. So it's a 40 cent stop loss. All right? By the time I get to 54.60, which is two to one, 40 cents times two is 80 cents. So 53.80 plus 80 cents is 54.60. By the time I get right here, I'm gone. I'm gone. Why am I gone? Because I know damn well that I'm not holding it up to 56 bucks. Now, some of you out there that are very patient are going, why not? Why not? Well, let me take a negative personality trait that you have and go, why do you do that? Let's say you bite your nails. And I go, why do you bite your nails? That's stupid, right? And you're sitting there going, well, I just, I have a hard time with, with stopping. I'm a nervous person. I have a hard time not biting my nails. To me, I'm looking at you with like deer in the headlights, crazy face. Like, are you kidding me? Who bites their nails? That's, that's what kids do. Some adults have a hard time with it. Now you're going, what's the analogy? The analogy is we all have things that are challenging to us. For me, managing on pivots was challenging. Why? Because I have a short-term personality. I am not a patient trader. The longer I'm in a trade, the more mistakes I make. Now, so what would I do here? I'd probably sell this thing too soon, right? Or I'd probably sell too much at first target. Now, why does that matter? It matters because you're messing with the expectancy. All right, that's a topic I'm not going to get into today. But there are certain management strategies that are really forgiving and certain management strategies that are not forgiving. Let me give you a quick example before I moved on. Or move on, okay? If you're shooting for, say, five to one targets, right? Five R targets. If you sell 
that trade early at say one to one or two to one, you're giving up three to one, four to one, right? If you're shooting for one to one targets and you sell at 0.75 R, you're giving up a quarter R. One trade has a far less of an impact when you're scalping, right? When you're shooting for big targets, they don't happen as often. And therefore, if you mess that one trade up, it has a much more profound impact on your bottom line. So know thyself. I'm not a patient trader. I shoot for two to one and I walk away. Does that mean you can't be trafficked? Am I doomed? Is that it for me? I'm done. <sighs> can't make money in this business. I was told pivots are the best way to manage. I'm sure you were told some management strategy is the best way to manage. I am telling you to manage per your personality. So let's find out. Am I doomed? It doesn't seem so in this case now, does it? Right? So this chart's a little bit older, guys. But nonetheless, you get a pullback here. Right? You get a pullback. Buy right here. Stop down here. So we have a buy setup at support, at a rising moving average, all that. That's not the problem. This stock went to like almost, what, 247.50. My exit was 244.35. I gave up three bucks. Am I doomed? Just doomed. Shooting for two to one targets. No. In fact, I got like two and a half to one on this. Right? So right here, I have a stop loss at 75 cents. Okay? I bought 800 shares of it. So do the math. It's like a $600 risk, give or take. Right? I made 1500 bucks on it. So I made like, uh, I don't know, two and a half R maybe. Something like that. Guys, I was gone on this wide range bar, right? Pretty much the top of that wide range bar, I was gone, gone. And yet the stock pivoted out, put in a little kind of ascending triangle, kind of a wedge ascending triangle, and then ripped again. So somebody else who is a more patient trader maybe took some off here, raised their stop to like 243.50 and then got the rest of the move out of it, potentially. But maybe they didn't because it also pulled back. See, the thing with pivot management is, and I'm not dogging it, is to get big targets, what do you have to do? You have to give back, right? To get a big target, you also have to give some back. It's a give and take. You can't protect everything and get big targets. You can't get big targets without giving them more room. So in this case, I got my two to one, two and a half, and I walked away. Sure, I gave up money. Doesn't matter. Guys, getting two to one on your winners, what do you really have to bat to make money? 40%? You need to bat 40%. Let's try it again. All right. Here's another example. All right. Not quite as good, but decent. Here's a three bar play. Here's a stock that gapped over a red bar on the daily and another red bar and a pivot and a breakout, right? So we have a red bar here, a red bar here, a pivot here, and a little bit of a, a, a kind of a consolidation breakout pivot gapped above all that, right? We needed to be at like 3640, give or take. Well, what happens? That's the daily chart that I scan for using dollar gainers and dollar losers, right? We talk about it all the time. Then you go here, gaps up wide range bar, narrow range bar, rip. It's a textbook three bar play. Did it start off really good? No, it <laughs> left a topping tail. Doesn't take away from the fact that it still worked. So you get in at 36.50, your stop loss is 36.30 or mine in this case, 20 cents. And I took what? Uh, 2,200 shares. So what's that? About a $450 risk, give or take. Okay, give or take. Thing rips up. I'm gone, guys. 36.86. Right here. You see this bar right here? I'm gone. What happens? Stock goes like 37.20. It goes another 2R, give or take. I'm gone. I got my 2 to 1, slightly less, maybe 1.9 to 1. I should have made like what? 840 bucks, something like that. I made 800. Okay? 2 to 1, gone. Two to one, gone. Walk away. This one was from a couple days ago. F-I-V-E. Climactic buy setup, parabolic buy setup using the pre-market chart. Right? Using the pre-market chart. My management's changed slightly since those examples I gave you. I don't go for 2RO or nothing now. My winner should make about 1.7, 1.8R, give or take. It's about what we got out of this. Okay, so my point is, is are you doomed if you only shoot for two to one targets and don't do pivots? No, guys, FIVE, I don't know where it's at today, but FIVE yesterday was at like $115. I'm out of this thing at, what was it, like 101? No, not even. I'm out at 99.70. You guys are, Jared, you gave up $15. So what? Next, next, 
next why that's my strategy that's my approach i have proven it to work over 15 years sure i give up money but i'm not foolish enough to think i'm gonna actually get that five or six dollar move i'm not gonna get that five dollar move i was out of this thing at like what was our full target on this because that was only a partial out at night i think it was like 102 we're out of this thing at 102 there it is 101 that's the full target 101 sure it went ten dollars higher who cares next 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 find a strategy or a management approach that suits your personality why it will be so much easier to follow if you choose a management strategy that goes directly against your personality you will really really struggle in this business the problem most people have they don't want to admit their real personality they don't want to admit it okay so on to revelation three all right the need for simplicity objectivity and self-responsibility i think almost every trader i've met lacks one of these either the simplicity part or the objectivity and self-accountability self-responsibility part guys the market's not out to get you no one's fishing for your shares even if it's true it's a terrible thing to believe okay consistency is what makes money okay the market's not out to get you the market just is it's not right it's not wrong it just is okay so having the mindfulness what is mindfulness mindfulness guys is the ability to evaluate what is happening which everybody can do but here's the difference in real time the ability to not react emotionally the ability to understand and go all right I took this trade. This is my management. I live with it. I live and die by, the, by, by my trading plan. That is it. So even though there are times, and you've heard me say it, I want to get out of this trade. It doesn't look good. I did it yesterday, right? I think it was, uh, was it Tesla yesterday that we traded short? I wanted to get out at one point. Thank goodness I didn't. Why? It worked. It made me a thousand bucks. It worked. Follow the plan, okay? So, the ability to evaluate what is happening in real time without letting your emotions control your decision making. My emotion yesterday on that trade was get out, it's not going to work. I didn't let my emotion control my action. My emotion got to me, sure, but I was mindful enough in real time to say the plan is the plan, follow it. The plan is the plan, follow it. Okay? I think it was maybe Lulu, maybe it wasn't Tesla, maybe it was Lulu. All right. The plan says do this. All right. I'm doing the plan. Why? Because the plan is not emotional. All right. The plan is not emotional. The plan is just empirical data. You can't argue with math. The math is the math. Okay. The only math you can argue with is $500 into a million and starting over again. That's just dumb. Okay. But when it comes to your trading plan, the math is the math. Don't let your emotions make decisions for you. You know that line in Top Gun? You know, you're letting your ego write checks your body can't cash. Don't let your emotions write checks that you can't cash. This is why most of you are failing. Next, simplicity. Perfect patterns rarely fail. PPRF, perfect patterns rarely fail. Why settle for less? Guys, I'm averaging about two trades a day, two and a half trades a day. I'm just not finding five, six, seven trades a day. I'm just not. Maybe they're out there because I'm not looking at 4,000 stocks every day. Maybe I'm looking at 400. So sure, I'm going to miss something. But quality over quantity is what I'm getting at. Okay. So due to your past and present actions, you are where you are supposed to be. I know you don't want to believe it, but you're where you're supposed to be. You're not ready for that next level yet because your actions aren't ready yet. So if you're unhappy with where you're at, then it's up to you to make the, the mindful change. What does that take though? It takes objectivity, right? It really takes objectivity. This is where you're failing. You're not believing you deserve to be where you're at. You're believing you're better than you are. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. You can think you're the greatest salesman in the world, but if you're last on the sales board, you're not the greatest salesman in the world. The numbers don't lie. So if you're unhappy with that, fix it, change it. How does that happen? Understanding your personality, understanding your behavior, 
all right, and being objective about it. And then man up or girl up and take the responsibility for those actions and the accountability for those actions and fix it. One way to do it, stay simple, keep it simple. Perfect patterns rarely fail. This isn't rocket science, guys. Anyone can do it, it's just most of you won't. This is that simple. Anyone really can do this, but most of you won't, okay? So let's take a look at a couple slides here in a second, all right? So when you take a look at this, guys, how many patterns do we have at live trades? Rhetorical, a lot. That's the answer, there's a lot. We have a lot of patterns here. Buy setups, sell setups, breakouts, breakdowns, three bar plays, four bar plays, parabolics, wedges, triangles, blah, 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 all right? I run out of breath talking about it. What's the best pattern we teach? Is it the three bar play? Is it a buy setup? Maybe it's a break. No, it's a wedge. Most people listening to this are going, oh, it's a three bar play. Why? Oh, because it's simple and it works. <laughs> three bar play is garbage to some people, right? You ever heard that? What's that? What's one man's trash is another man's treasure. You ever heard that? What's one man's trash or in today's world? What's one person's trash is another person's treasure. Okay. Well, if you're not good at a three bar play, it's not going to be a very good pattern for you. If you're way better with buy setups, then a buy setup is a better pattern for you. It, there is no best pattern is what I'm at. Okay. So how many patterns do you need to be successful? Just one. Just one. Two is nice. It's nice to have two. Well, just one. Most of you guys are, you know, a jack of all trades and you master nothing. Really great traders only need one to two patterns. I'm not saying you can't have four or five in your toolbox eventually, eventually. But when you start, pick one or two and stick with them. Two is a good number. Stick two and stick with them. Okay? So how many trades per day do you need to be successful? One, two, three. Honestly, you don't really need more than two or three trades a day. Could you get away with one? Yeah, I think that would be a challenge. 20 trades a month is not that many, but 40 or 50 is all you need. I'm not knocking people that take 60, 70, 80 trades a month. But I don't think you need 200 trades a month either. I honestly know some traders that take 200 trades a day. Micro scalpers, in and out, in and out. That's work, man. You need a towel next to you. That's how much work that is. Okay? Now, let's talk about keeping it simple. Let's spend some time on this. Okay? Let's spend some time on this. What's the number one most important thing you need on a technical chart? What's the number two most important thing you need on a technical chart? Guys, these are... These are questions you all need to be asking. What is the single most important thing on a chart? Okay. The number one. Mo I mean, it is the, it's the most, it's, you can't even argue it. Okay. There's only one thing that's number one. There can only be one king. It's just price, guys. It's price. What the heck are you trading? If you can't measure it in price, then how are you going to make money? right? If you can't measure a chart with price, then what are you actually buying and selling? Nothing. Price is by far, I mean, it's so far ahead of everything that's not even funny. Price is the most important thing on a chart. What's number two? Volume. Because the price could go higher on one share. It could go higher on two shares. Some people are vexed by that. They really are. I get traders all the time. They're like, Jared, how did that stock move up $1 on only 25 shares? Well, a buyer and a seller met at that price point for 25 shares. That's how. That's how. Okay. Volume is not as important as price, but man, it's really, really important. See, it doesn't matter, guys, if you have a great pattern, a great price pattern, if there's no shares to be had. Right? So yes, price is important. But if you don't have the volume or at least enough volume to get the, the shares you need, it's a worthless trade. So really, they go hand in hand. One without the other is really worthless, right? So what else do you need on a technical chart? That's the next question. What would be the, the third thing? So if price is number one and volume is number two, what's the third thing you need, you have to have, you need it, you got to have it? What do you need? Nothing, right? Nothing. Price and volume is it. Price is what forms a candlestick. Sure, we need a pattern, but the pattern is from price. So that's already been answered. So some people are saying pattern. It's a great answer, but the answer is nothing.
because price equals pattern eventually, right? So price is the candlesticks, right? So that tells us what is happening. Volume tells us how. So let's take a look. Is this what your chart looks like? Is this what your chart looks like? I call it spaghetti charts. Should I call it pasta charts? I mean, there's price on here. There's volume. There's moving average, relative strength, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, trend lines, on balance volume, com channel index. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot fibs, MACDs, advanced decline, applied volatility. Oh, I forgot about the McClellan oscillator. Now, the Keltner channel is really my favorite, though. Whew. Guys, do you know that there's over four or 500 indicators? Four or 500 indicators. How the F is that even possible? If there's that many, is any one of them really that important? Let me repeat the question. It's rhetorical. If there are that many indicators, how can any single one of those indicators be, quote, that important? The answer is it's not. It's not. So why do you put all this crap on your charts? Why do you put it all on your charts? Oh, I, I get an edge from it. Really? Is that the 15th chat room you've been to, too? Yeah? You get an edge from it? You're four years in, still breaking even? You're really getting an edge from it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't ever go against the Keltner bands. Whew, can't do that. Guys, I'm kidding. Guys, you think I'm kidding, huh? Let's take a look. I wouldn't do this to you without an example. What's on this? Is there... I forgot my comm channel. Shit. Where's my RSI? Damn it. Where's my Bollinger Band? Shoot. What am I going to do? There's no way I can trade this. There's no possible way I could recognize a chart on here without one of those RSIs, CCIs, Fib retracement. There's just no way I could do it. Anybody see a, a pattern on this chart? Anybody see a pattern? I don't even have volume on this chart. There's just price. I'm not even giving you the price. I'm just giving you the candlesticks. Hold on a sec. What's that all about again? What is this shit? What is this crap? What is this garbage? I know it's not going to change your mind. Some of you swear by it. You think your shit doesn't stink too. All right? You swear by this stuff. I'm just telling you. That's the truth right there. The truth is right here. Okay, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, green bar, support level, rip, pullback, rip. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Ugh. We have price and volume. This is like overkill now. I added the price. And I know it's, it's really hard, but just for fun, what price point is the pattern at on this? What price point is the pattern at on this trade? Anybody want to just stab in the dark here? I know it's really, really tough. <sighs> right? Wow. $54. I know. It's amazing you guys got that. I don't know how you did it. I don't, we don't have a, a Fibonacci retracement on here. We don't have a Bollinger Band on here. I don't have a moving average on here. I don't have a relative strength in it. How in the world did you guys figure that out? You guys are cheating, aren't you? You put an RSI on this and you didn't tell me, right? How did you guys know that the pattern was at 54 bucks? It's impossible. There's no way you could have figured that out with one of those, without putting at least one of, one of those 500 indicators on this. It's impossible. I, you know what? I'm, I must have told you the answer beforehand. You can sense the sarcasm. This is a joke. There's the breakdown at 54. And oh my gosh, look at that. It went fifty. Okay. What else do you need? Let's do it again. I'm not done yet. Let's do it again. <sighs> Where's the pattern, guys? Give me a rough price point. I'm asking this time, not rhetorical this time. Give me a rough price point on where this pattern is that you see. Just roughly. You don't have to be exact. Area, range. Oh my gosh, you guys are getting the answer right again. Something's not right here. This is two times. See, the last one I could just go down as luck. I could just call it lucky. You guys just got lucky on the last slide. But now this is two slides in a row, and you're getting the answer right. Shit. Something's wrong. Remember, 
We don't have any of these things to guide us. So how are you guys getting the answers right? I, I didn't put the stochastic on. I, I missed the on balance. I mean, the comm channel was like, that was the holy grail. You guys can get the sarcasm. You don't need any of this garbage. Right around that 6130 area, stop loss like, I don't know, 6080. Lower high, lower high, lower high. Right where? Minor price support or level one, sorry, level two price support. 50% retracement, rip. You're doing all this with nothing. You don't even know the time frame. Does it matter? No. It could be a one minute chart. It could be a 60 minute chart. It could be a yearly chart. It won't because you can see the daybreak here, but that's not the point. I could eliminate that too. Price is number one and volume is number two. And the volume is only there to tell us how the price is forming and if there's enough shares for us to trade. And you guys are blowing me away by how good you are at this. OMG. This one is not quite textbook, but it's decent. Not quite textbook. This topping tail is a little bit too big, but it's close. It's really, really close. Oh my gosh, somebody just said it's a three bar play. How'd you know that? Without the Bollinger Band on here. Guys, the sarcasm is just ridiculous, so I'll stop. Come on. So those magic eight balls, you must be shaking them on your desk. So you tell me, if you recognize the last four charts, why do you need everything else? Well, it, it kind of lets me know, Jared, when the MACD crossover happens, that's my buy signal. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. I got gotcha. you. I understand. That's why you're still breaking even. Yep. Okay. Got it. Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. Support? Oh, what's support? Oh, support's based off price, isn't it? That's weird. And the volume just lets us know if there's enough shares to take. Okay? Right? The shake on this is beautiful, by the way. That's a beautiful shakeout. Okay? It's a little bit big, but because it's a shake, it makes this even better. And just, it's just, what a beautiful trade. Imagine bar by bar. I don't even know the time frame. It's probably a two or a five minute chart, but I don't even know because it doesn't matter. There's no time frames on these charts. It, they don't matter. Okay, so guys, focus, be a professional, right? Don't waste time. Don't surf the internet when you're supposed to be scanning. Don't worry about what's on the news on MSNBC or what to see. I, I see news posted all the time in the chat room, all the time. People go, oh, well, uh, Kramer's on or this. It's like, are you kidding me? Focus on the chart, man. So be disciplined and focused. You know, wait for the best and don't settle for less. That's it. Don't take a trade for the sake of taking a trade, right? Be patient, be calm. That's it. That is it. Be focused and disciplined. Treat it like a business, okay? Treat it like a business. So I don't know why it says before we get started. Let's let's change this out, okay? Summary. There. Don't you like, like, in the moment updates, changes? All right. Know thyself, guys. Then decide what you want. All right. The trader who knows himself the best is also the best trader. Okay. If you don't understand who you really are as a trader, not who you think you are, who the numbers suggest you are. When you record yourself trading and you see that person that's supposed to hold for three to one, but you sell it one to one. Well, you're not as patient as you thought you were. If you do it once out of 50 trades, no big deal. If you do it 10 or 15 times out of 50 trades, that's a problem. So if you can't do something at least 90 to 95% of the time, you need to make an adjustment. Because without following a plan, you're just not going to get anywhere. Because it's, guys, our biggest edge in this business is consistency. You know that, right? Our biggest edge, more so than the charts, it's consistency. It's doing the same thing over and over again. Okay? So put an outline, put a trading plan together on how you're going to achieve your success. Get the necessary education and training. Work Purposefully, remember we talked about most great, um, successful people work two hours a day, really focused, really hard at something, and then be objective, but flexible enough to reevaluate along the way. Guys, really, anyone can do this. Most won't. I'm not going to lie to you. Most of you are going to fail at it because you're not going to do these things. And another thing, most of you aren't going to give it enough time. 
Most of you are going to take, you're going to give this six to 12 months. You're going to, oh, it just doesn't work for me. That business is a joke. That's for gamblers. They, traders don't make money. No, no, you gave up too soon. It's like me saying, I want to be a professional tennis player, but I'm going to give it six to 12 months. Oh, that's different, Jared. No, that's different. That's different. How's it different? Are you the CEO of Walmart after six to 12 months? So you just graduated college, which took you four years of education, by the way. And in six to 12 months, you want to be the CEO of Walmart. It ain't happening. You want to go be Tiger Woods in six, it ain't happening. So why should it happen here? Tell me, give me an honest to God reason why it should happen here. Guess what? The market's a pretty damn hard place to play. It's a tough place to play because your competition is brutal, right? Your competition is everybody. Think about it. It is. So why should this be easy? One more thing. If you get to not have a boss, if you get to trade for 90 minutes a day, if you get to not drive in rush hour traffic, if you get to stay home, make six figures, if you get to take vacation whenever you want, you get to do all those things. Do you think it's going to be easy? Nope. It's not. It's going to be one of the hardest things you've ever tried because of all those perks, so to speak. It's because of those things that's so hard. If it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it, right? So we'll go back as a quick summary, guys, as a quick, quick, quick summary. Experts are made, not born, okay? That's been proven, statistically proven. They are not born. They are made through hard work. It's all about management. We talk about what? self management, behavioral management, personality management, time management, money management, trade management. It's all about management. And at the end of the day, none of those things will matter if you can't be objective and show some self-accountability and self-responsibility for what your actions are. Okay? All these charts, wow, that's really nice, Jared. So what? It means nothing. If you get in this thing at 49.50 and get out at 49.60, who cares how good it was? I'll repeat, if you get in at 49.50 and out of 49.60, you're, you're going to be a losing, losing trader, all right? I think next week's lecture, guys, I'm going to do some focus on win-loss ratio and batting average, just so you know, we're going to talk about that, okay? So if you can't understand that, yes, this is a beautiful chart, but if you're not able to manage on pivots, it's not a beautiful chart. If you can't figure that out, you're never going to succeed. If you really in your heart believe you need all this junk on your charts. You will never succeed. Okay? I have proven that all you need is price and volume. Okay? But understanding yourself is number one. All right? So figure that out. Decide what you want from this business. Decide how you're going to get it within who you are. Who you are. What your personality is. Okay? Got it? All right, that is going to do it, guys, for this week's lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I say this every week, but the charts are nice, man. They really are. It's like flipping through a Victoria's Secret catalog, but that's not what makes you the money in the big picture. It's a, it's a part of the picture. It is. It's a part of the picture. But the person who looks back at you in the mirror is the bigger part of the picture. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll get back at it again next week. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.